Hello, this is Chris Frederick with the Stretch to Win Institute, and I'm really excited to be here with my colleague, Laurie Nimitz. Welcome, Laurie. Hey, thank you, Chris. Nice to see you. Well, it, it's a historical, and just so you know, my cat will be going back and forth, one of five, so we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but let's keep it spontaneous, right? It sounds good to me. It works. So um, we're meeting at a historical moment, I think. It's been called historical, and I think we'll have you tell us why that is, if that is. But uh, why don't we get started by telling our listeners a little bit about yourself, what you do, and kind of how you got involved in anatomical dissection, because that's what we're going to talk about. Freya, a new, brand new model, Plastinet model in Berlin has been unveiled. And so let's start with you first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, going back. We'll unveil you. We'll unveil you. <laughs> we'll unveil me. Wow, that's exciting. Um, yeah, a lot of people know or know me from different aspects of what I do, but I've been in some form of movement, anatomy dissection for the past, gosh, now it's probably closer to 30 years, but it's, it's in there, a couple decades that I've been working. Um, I started out as a dance movement therapist, so that's kind of on the psychological end of things and, and as a licensed psychotherapist, and I've always been involved in sports, movement, and then always wanted to dive deeper into the anatomy. Um, you know me too as a kayaker, I've, I've done kayaking for years and years, um, but yeah, as far as coming into the anatomy, I had some of the basic anatomy needing to come into my, you know, master's degree for therapy, but nothing matched the books. So I was like, hmm, this is a little bit different. I want to take a deeper dive into this whole area of anatomy and see why the people I'm working with don't look like what I'm seeing in the book. So I actually, and that's what gets a lot of us started down this pathway. So I kind of, um, really wanted to look deeper. And even around that time, um, I found the Anatomy Trains book, <laughs> the first edition. I'll give my hats off to Tom there. I'd gone into a 200-hour training with him very early on. So um, this was when the book was just, you know, barely known. The name was barely out there. And it also got me started down anatomical dissection further. I think he told me first to go study with Gil, which I did for a while, um, and still great friends and colleagues with uh, Gil there, Gil Headley. And um, then I started to also assist. I was faculty for anatomy trains, both for um, the company and, and as far as dissections for about a decade. Um, so, and then most recently, I moved into some of my own work with Leslie Kamenoff, um, was going to be a one-time dissection. We've decided we're doing a second one come March. And I've also been really um, happy to say I'm a guest uh, visiting professor at Rush Medical, and I've gotten to dissect there and do some really cool projects there as well, um, especially with movement and looking at fascia. So Fascia Net Plastination Project, which is kind of what we're all talking about, um, really was brought into being by Robert Schleich, Dr. Robert Schleich, which a lot of us know in this field. Um, many of us had come to the plastinarium in different forms saying, wouldn't it be great to have a plastinate that really focused on fascia? And a lot of us said this <laughs> over the years. But it took Dr. Robert Schleich to say, oh, I'll get together people and we'll gather people in as volunteers to dissect from all over the world. And that was part of what kind of started the project and what pulled me into it as well. We kind of started that whole project in 2018. We had two different groups that did some mini plastinates that you've seen over the years and everything else. And then 2019 was when we started to work on Freya. And there was only actually kind of a core group of us dissectors under that. We usually were teams of two or three people tops at a time. Um, I was out in Germany in 2019 for about a month and a half, um, working with great people, uh, Gary Carter and Vladimir um, Chermensky from, from the Plastinarium. Um, Gary Carter independently kind of designed the whole project 
But as we dissected, it shifted and changed and was really thankful. I, I dissected alongside of some of my favorite friends and colleagues, John, uh, Dean. There's a lot in there. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the starting to scratch the surface of where we are. Tracy, who I think also is known in your world, Mela, mm -hmm. um, is also right. somebody who I dissected aside for that project. So, Well, I know uh, my first experience with you as uh, one of Tom's assistants mm -hmm. in um, what used to be the, ana uh, the anatomical laboratory of enlightenment, Todd Garcia's place. It, he used to have two locations and one was right here in my hometown of Tempe Absolutely. for quite a while, for seven or eight years, we used to have Tom stay at our house, Tom Myers. Yeah. And we attended a, a whole house as well. <laughs> it's a great house. And we, yeah. And we attended a whole lot of of the dissections and I met you there and I was just struck by your ability, your talent of just like with superficial facets, like not many people can do that without destroying it basically. <laughs> and so, um, you know, was, and then the, the net, the last thing I remember that really hit me that still, I still think of is how you, if correct me if, uh, if I'm wrong, cause I don't know exactly how you did this, but you created a, the fashion model of the heart did I did it was incredible um, was that the first time I mean you know no one had ever seen this time um somebody kind of did it layman terms I had wow. seen and it's it's a decellularization so we're stripping away everything um other than the extracellular matrix that's left so um you know the the muscle fiber the everything else gets stripped away and I had read about this in Doris Taller's lab um, Heart Institute, and I thought this was fascinating. Um, and I, I hats off too to Todd Garcia for one time asking me, "What do you want to do as a side project in lab?" And I said, "Well, this is really cool. Can we do this?" And he he let um, let me do that as a side project. Not only the hearts, which I did first and initially, um, but also a fascial kidney, which I wrote about too for experimental biology. And yeah, the process was mostly stripping away all of those other tissues other than that scaffolding that's left behind as fascia. And this was one of the things too, I know I kind of then inspired Gil Headley to do some of his work on the adipose layer. And also he came in as an advisor for the fascial net plastination project. So there's little pieces of some of those things that have come into um, the idea that we might be able to show more of those sorts of models. I think it's important for education and, and teaching and just have a different way of thinking about the body, which is so cool. We so let's get that. into that a little bit. Yeah. yeah, let's get into that a little bit about this, the unveiling of what they call Freya. And I love the play on words. I actually looked up and I said, this is a name I know from mythology. And sure enough, it's from the Norse mythology, maybe from other places as well. What does it mean? Power, bravery, uh, something along those lines, the, the symbolism Power, of bravery, the and She also was an artistic, um, had a lot to do with artistry, which we loved. Um, that was some of the original volunteer team decided to name her after that. And then the name um, from Angelina, jo um, Angelina Wally, who is the director now of, of uh, Body Worlds and the Plastinarium, changed a little bit of that to um, get into that that current thing of the acronym for, again, the education and process of fascia. So um, it was a kind of a nod to the original dissector group that decided to, to name it after that, that Norse goddess. So, yeah. And um, I noticed right away, and for those who are listening, we will tell you where to find the YouTube video link to see this, because this was recently unveiled. Freya is the name of the new plas fascial plastinate model that was created and unveiled. The, the unveiling happened just last week, right? It was just yeah. last week yep. for the very first time. Um, so could you um, talk about the unveiling? What, what did it really reveal? How is this different than the body, the plastinates from the previous body worlds that many of us have seen? all over the world, right? That went on tour. Yeah. I saw it here in Phoenix. Uh, I don't know, five, but no, I saw this about 10 years ago here in Phoenix. So how, how does it, how is this model? Why is this historical? 
why is this unveiling historical, this model historical, and how is it different than previous plastinates? Well, a lot of, you mean, the previous plastinates focused on muscular system, focused on, you know, those sorts of attachments, sometimes the broad areas of fascia. There's a couple examples, even in Gubin, Germany, where you do see some of our kind of myofascial connections that we talk about in various forms and various systems in there, but they, they kept usually the broad areas, the larger areas of connective tissue, if they kept them at all. So this was very different to focus on that. They actually weren't sure we would be able to get that much adipose tissue as a layer plastinated, because that's something they really hadn't done before. That usually gets um, stripped away pretty early on. So to be able to highlight that and to show that is something really new and really different. Um, so that was part of the, the they, we didn't know if it was gonna work or not but we wanted to try and the plastinarium was a willing partner in wanting to try that as well. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the kind of the new reveal. And I think people's response from over the, all over the world kind of showed that too, that like, wow, we haven't seen anything quite like this before. And yet there are recognizable pieces to highlight different things from different thinkers in the fascial field. So like I said, um, Gary Carter was an instrumental part of that in the design, but as we dissect it, we all had input. We also noticed the dissection style itself really focused on the spiraling and curving. Um, all of us felt it was important to highlight movement. A lot of their plastinids do that, but I mean, just the cuts of the um, dissection, we wanted to have curves and spirals and to kind of highlight that aspect. Well, of course, having been a professional dancer myself, my wife as well, and then you in the dance world and a lot of us uh, practitioners and movement educators from the dance world, I was so pleased. As soon as I saw the unveiling of Frey, I was like, ah, you know, a carte, a face, whatever it was, this ballet yeah. position. You know, she's on releve, uh, which is uh, uh, a heel raise, they say, in fitness or athletics, but we call it a releve. She's in releve, presenting her leg, arm across, tilted back uh, with rotational spiral chirality e evident in the positioning. I thought, yes, of course it's a dance movement. <laughs> it's so <laughs> elegant, beautiful, right? Exactly. Not that athletic isn't, but we've seen the guy on the skateboard in Body Worlds Mm -hmm. and other things, which was unbelievable to see that. Yep. But this was just elegant. I thought the choice was perfect. And everyone in the, in the chat at the unveiling, I, I kept seeing beautiful, so beautiful. Oh my God. You know, they were just blown away by the image of it all. Yeah. So. And even when Angelina Wally and saw um, kind of early after the dissection part had been done, um, she had made a comment that, you know, we have another beauty, um, just really highlighting that. And there's a lot of work that goes into the final little details, the placement and everything else. But um, just highlighting that, I mean, as we did in the dissection, I think spoke well with the entire team, the vision of everybody who inputted into that um, whole body. What I found fascinating was if you look at the standing leg of the model, she's in releve or heel raise position, plantar flex, closed kinetic chain. You almost got the feeling that it's contracting, you know, because I could see if you didn't show it, it looked, appeared to be in a shortened, contracted position versus the other leg in a lengthened position. Yeah. But how do they do that? When you say movement, that's part of what I felt. I could feel it, uh, the movement as opposed to it's just hit, it's just uh, there at its resting length. And of course it's a cadaver, right? So of course there's, there's only so much you can do with that. So I found that just fascinating that you achieved, you know, you, the team achieved the goal of it being as realistic looking as possible. And you can almost, you could imagine it better in a live person. And now it helps us visualize it in a live person. For me, that's the takeaway is now I want to, uh, I'm using my x-ray MRI eyes right. that I can see, you know, that's what dissection training has done for me. I can see through the skin now, having taken all these dissecting courses. And recently my wife and I did a whole cadaver dissection with stretching 
And we got to see how the fiber <laughs> changed in movement. And that's another conversation. But um, speaking of the superficial fascia, I, I was fascinated by that part because, you know, a lot of people look at the fat and they're like, okay, let's get rid of the fat and look at the superficial other, you know, aspects closer to the muscle or the myofascia. And, but I was like, uh, Dr. Chermensky or someone, Gary Carter said something about the connective tissue bridges that mm -hmm. form in the connective tissue. Can you speak on that a little bit? Because I found that fascinating. For lack of a better term, I'll call them in lay terms, like little pock marks, divots right. or something that actually showed the lattice, yeah, uh, exactly. I get. From one layer to another. Um, that and it's was. actually, yeah, it's interesting because that was one of the first areas I worked on, on Freya, when I came into the full, um, full donor form and was revealing that. And I actually, um, it is, you always disrupt something in order to show something else. And you spoke to how hard that layer can be to preserve as a total, um, total thing. It's interesting layers. I, I'm, as we talk about this term, of course, we talk about the whole um, body system, the whole of the body is a oneness but there is places that tend to separate um, easier than another. And that is one of the areas I can, as a dissector, find that separation, but there are always little parts that reach up towards the skin and reach on down. So whenever we're separating those sorts of layers of dermis, epidermis, adipose tissue, all of that, you're always disrupting something in order to find that layer. And um, so that is some of what we're talking about and what makes some of those pockmarks too is, um, of course, the body wants to hold together. Well, why would it do this? Why would it have little strands that kind of reach up into another layer? Well, it's again about movement. We have little, little areas that reach up into the next layer. We can create some of that shear in some of those um, different places in the body system without breaking apart or, or, you know, falling apart completely, there is some movement that happens with that freedom of reaching up and reaching down. Yeah. I think um, part of what comes to mind now is we still, even in the fascia world, I think we get, I feel, and I hear, we still get too stuck with the linear model of the lines and it's like, where's the three dimensionality of this? Because when you look at it as a kinetic chain, okay, it connects from head to toe, but you're still looking at a straight line and it's really, the body's not a straight line. Yeah. And that's, that's a bit of an artificial dissection, if you will, of the mind of reality. It's the same thing. You make a choice when you dissect and what you will reveal. And so for me, the struggle has always been with these, all of the models, and you can speak on this if you'd like, where is you missing the fluid nature of the body, which is a, the majority aspect of the body's fluid, and you cannot preserve you cannot preserve that. And I have my own ideas of we can do it in a fluid filled tank with a cadaver, with the visualization that could see through the body. And this this is the dissection of the future that I see happening. It's in my head right now. I don't know if anyone's working on this, but I would love to see a suspended cadaver unembalmed of course that can be manipulated somehow with a robot or something in there moving it into movement and then you could shine different uh, spectrum lights that show different parts of the materials of the body whether it's just all the fascia and somehow digitally erase the rest so you can see things and at will just turn it on you know that to me is like the future body world <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And that's a little bit of the beginning of what the human data project did with, again, that rotating thigh image that a lot of us right. have seen. digitally um, used, you know, computer algorithms to delete everything that wasn't um, fascia. So it's an interesting thing. Any of these models are just that they're modeled and they can be useful. Um, as a model, as long as you don't go there absolute all the time or, you know, reality all the time. Um, I've been reading a lot of physics lately. <laughs> and, Me too. Yeah. And, you know, Frank, um, 
oh, Frank uh, Wozik, I think is his name, who talks about a beautiful question. This is one of my favorite things I've been reading lately. He also talks a lot about in physics about holding two things at once and can both be true, can both be not true sometimes. Can you have that duality of two things existing? And I think about this a lot in dissection. Of course, the holism of the body is being a truth. Of course, layers sometimes being a truth. You know, my brother is a geologist and he looks at the earth a lot in layers. There are places things tend to separate and change name. This is a lot like the human body. Um, doesn't mean it goes very hard in a hard line here and then the next line is here. Sometimes again, there's those little areas, um, fuzzy areas where the one layer is kind of blending into the next, a lot like the body. So can we hold, sometimes these conversations, it's really interesting to me, we get very absolute, but can we hold more than one thought at a time? Can we hold one, more than one idea at a time? I think so. <laughs> well, what you're saying makes me think of the controversy with those who speak of layers and those who say there are no layers. And I right. could name people who stand behind these words, but I won't get into that. We've heard that at fascia congresses. We've heard it at other presentations. I think they're both right. It's exactly what you said. Because when you look at anything dissected, the fluid layer is gone. The fluid aspect of the body is gone. So you're going to see it more in layers because all Everything has collapsed in a sense, I, I feel, that the there's a lack of three-dimensionality that the fluid part of the body greatly contributes to because to me it expands everything and that's part of why everything is under tension. It's called fascia the human tensional network. The second edition will be coming out real soon. Yeah. Uh, Robert Schleip and others who've sure. contributed, I've contributed to that book that's coming out any day now. Um, and that's what's missing and we cannot portray that. And when we look at these models, we have to think of the fluid aspects of things that's missing and how that would inform what we're looking at. And that's part of the duality to me is what you, you just said, can we imagine it? We see it without the fluid layer. It's all been, you know, exsanguinated, right? Pulled out with the blood and everything's pulled out. And so- in preserved tissue, not in uninvolved tissue. That's, that's well, that's interesting because I've been doing a lot of dissection with unembalmed, but uh, is it totally, is it exsanguinated to some degree or left some left or it's all in there? It's all in there. Um, but what you also don't have is the same um, degree of like atmospheric pressure interacting. Like as soon as I open the chest cavity, we can get a lot of the effects of like how the body looks and breathing and everything else. But the reality is we're not having that same effect <coughs> as if it's a closed cavity, um, just because we're not a closed system as soon as I put a scalpel anywhere on the body. You know, the tension to some degree of what you said with the live person that comes from the animation of the spirit and the live person is gone. That and that can, and that contributes to the lack of tension in the body that you feel with a cadaver. It goes beyond the stiff stage into the flaccid stage. Right. We all know what that is. We move the cadaver around right. very freely. Right. And there's a lot of tension along different uh, planes of movement. You'll feel the tension in a hamstring. You'll feel that tight hamstring on one side. It's looser on the other. You will feel that. But what's still missing is that uh, the, how can I put this, the negative pressure that's in the lungs, all those things that create this extra tension on the network that is part of the communication system and everything else. That's all, it's just, I just wanted to speak on that just a little bit about whether you had any thoughts that that informs the duality of when you look at it through the layers versus not through the layers. You can look at it in both ways. Absolutely. Well, and I think you bring up an important point because to me as well, whenever I'm looking at any of our, our donors in lab, that's not the person any longer. It's very clear to me that this is, yeah, the DNA, the biological remains, the life that was carved through that body, but the animated spirit, that's not there any longer. That's, it's more, I oftentimes liken it to being like a seashell. We're seeing that carved pathway 
remains. But like you said too, even the tension in a different way of using the word are in the body of somebody's personality. Um, we can see, yes, tight hamstring over time. We'll see those asymmetric differences, but how they might have hold, held themselves at the end of life or just, you know, personality, some of that, if it was long-term, it gets written into the body. Some of that is gone the moment, you know, death has happened. So that's an interesting piece of it, I think, all as well, for sure. Yeah. Thank you for that. So in terms of summarizing things in, in, a, in a way, um, how does Freya, how does it benefit if we look at that, if one of my students looks at Freya, how should, not how should they look at it, but if I'm just thinking about introducing this to my students, it's like, you know, here's the, the, the other plast and it's in a myofascial context and this is Freya. So what can they learn from Freya? going forward? Well, how can we use that to educate our students, other practitioners, colleagues, and also um, the public, perhaps? Yeah, and I, I think that's really an important point and something I've been thinking about a lot too um, for an article that I've been working on. And some of this is, you know, why, why have a public showing? Sometimes people, um, you know, are concerned, is this just sensationalization of something instead of education, but I think it's really important as an educational tool because we do look at things like that and we get ideas or we see strategies we may not have thought about right before. Having a shift of what is always thought about as the inside of the body and having that ground shift to go, oh, here's a fascial system highlighted, that's an important change and I think that is important not only for you know practitioners who are already interested in fashion seeing the reveal and things like that but for the general public as well to go oh my adipose layer really connects everywhere what's that about oh if i have an injury or a scar that's going to make an impact on everything or wow that layer also is beautiful as well as functionality too much of it may put the body in danger, but it, too little <laughs> puts the body in danger as well. So looking at things like that and seeing connections, um, I think is really important. And it's seeming why there was the smaller, the exhibit wasn't so small, that was done um, for Berlin in 2019, was it? Yep, 2019. That was the individual plastin in pieces. And I was part of that committee as well. That was spearheaded with Gary Carter and Michelle Clausen. And I think part of the drive to do that was to share and to see this. We have, my husband did the Otacast app that has the fascial plastin. So you can put a link in um, too. That's a free access to those images um, so that you can sit with it and learn and hear you know, people who worked on those dissections talk about the dissections or team members talk about the dissections um, and to think about it in a different way. When we see those fascial septums as the highlight instead of the muscle in between, we start to rethink about strategies like, oh, connections in those um, septums might be just as critical as the muscles we're talking about um, that fill those pockets. So I think anytime we change how we visualize something, that's, that's an important thing. That's how we change um, anatomy, art, anything in the world. You know this too, is from our discussions in art and dance and everything too, you know, having you mean dance style change or a new way of thinking changes vocabulary, changes what we can think about or how we can take the next step forward, literally. Um, so I think that that's happened too with anatomy. Anytime, you know, we've changed our models of what we look at and how we see, that can give us new new possibilities of what we can do next, yeah. Very exciting, thanks for inspiring all of us. You know, there was a time when we thought, well, anatomy, been there, done that. We all know where all the muscles are. No more to learn. <laughs> well, <laughs> there's always something more to learn. So yeah, this is going, this is going to, 
this uh, will change the teaching of anatomy in medical schools, in all schools that use anatomy. This is going to change everything. And it's extremely exciting. So that's why I think it's also historical. Absolutely. It's, it'll be disruptive in a sense. It will really be disruptive against the biomechanical model, which we need. Mm -hmm. But it'll be a uh, development or evolution from the biomechanical model, aka the industrial age, <laughs> yes. into the future of quantum healing and aspects of the body function on a quantum physics level which is a whole nother talk, but we won't get into. Well, we will at some point though, I'm sure. <laughs> some point, at some point, it, it begs a conversation. So um, anything in the future from, um, you know, Berlin, from the Plastination Project, from Freya, the you guys, the team, what's going on in the future? Is there any more models coming or something else? Yeah, and actually I'm part of the dissection happening in Gubin this January. We'll have to see where everything goes with um, travel and everything else going on. But I'm assisting. Carla Stecco is heading that up. Um, Robert Schleich will be there. A lot of the original team of the Fashion at Plastination Project will be there. And some of it will be lecture and also potentially making some additional um, of those mini models that we've seen. And we're certainly talking as a deep dive into that process. Um, Montreal is coming up fall of next year, and that's the next Fascial um, Research Congress, which as you know, happens about every three years, has gotten kind of postponed with the pandemic. Our last one was Berlin 2018. So we will be having Freya coming in for that. Um, you know, again, don't hold me to anything. This is all travel and up to, you know, all the powers that be. Um, but that will be a place to see it. And I'm also doing a pre-con with Gary and Rochelle talking about that project in depth. So if you're at the Congress, you want to hear a deep dive into some of the nitty gritty details, um, we'll be doing that there as well. And we're looking to do more education. I mean, I think all of us who came into the project, we volunteer dissected those hours because of a love and a passion for this work. Um, so anybody involved with that immediate project um, is doing it because they love to. And, mm -hmm. you know, contact, there's more information on the Fascial Research Society. There's a Facebook page um, that's out there, I think, too, and a couple other things as ways to reach out to some of the, the members of the team, too. Wow, it sounds like we're going to see the evidence of labors of love and passion for this. Uh, from the volunteer team, which is, uh, we thank you. I, I'll thank you for everyone who appreciates yeah. this. Yeah, and we have from to our thank heart. the Plastinarium too, because they took this on yeah. on their end. Um, like I said, that was that was Robert's doing to um, move things around to actually make this collaboration, which we really have been so thankful for. Yeah. Well, thank you to Robert Schleip, uh, Dr. Robert Schleip, the Plastinarium, and the entire team uh, that worked with Freya. Um, yeah, thank you so much for your time and for illuminating just behind the scenes a little bit for us what went on for the last several years uh, in making this a reality. And this is, I, I'm getting all goose pimples right now, whereas uh, J-Lo says gooseies <laughs> are happening in my body because I'm just thinking about the disruption is a good disruption to our view of the human body. And it's just going to change everything, how we teach and how we God, the, the extension of, of movement educators, how are they going to, how does this change learning about movement even? That's a whole nother thing, much less physical therapy and rehabilitation, medicine, and, and on and on and on. Um, the world's the stage now. Absolutely. And Freya is going, her permanent home is in that museum um, in Berlin. So think about too all the people that come in from the public who get to see that and take that you know also back with them in different ways. Uh, that that's part of the you know thing we were hoping to spark and inspire with everybody. Yeah, I think you 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 are you have achieved it and you will be ongoingly <laughs> achieving this uh, as the years pass by. So uh, last but not least, uh, is there anything you want to you want to share your contact information for any reason or purpose? Um, before you do that, though, 
Is it okay to talk about a book that's coming out that you're oh, writing? Yes, thank you. I'm so bad at self-promotion. <laughs> Here we go. Um, you're tense. Yeah. I'm it's, it's, this one is, and it's um, your publisher too. This is under Handspring. I'm doing a book that will be coming out next year, um, Myofascial System in Movement and Form. And it's going to highlight a little bit of some of these pieces of things too, but talk about it in relationship. You're guesting in this book as well. Um, I have some other amazing guests that are coming in. It's a very visually rich book, which is something obviously important to me um, because I do think seeing images changes how we perceive things a lot. So whether they're images in nature um, that can re-spark us into thinking different ways about it, um, this is some of the area I'm, I'm very passionate about. And big thanks to Handspring. They've been really um, just a, a wonderful company to work with and really behind some of my work that has I've transformed over the years. So thank can you people for that. Oh, of course, of course. Can Pete, I'm so excited about it. And I'll definitely be, uh, you know, uh, talking to my students about it. And I'd love to eventually interview about the book. Sure, sure. That's coming. It. It's in its final stages coming along. So is there any preview uh, possibilities of ordering now? Or would, do we have to wait? You can. If you go on the website and you sign up for notifications, you'll get a preview price, a discount price. So under Handspring, and then if you go under my last name, Nemitz, N as in Nancy, E, M as in Mary, E, T, Z as in Zebra, um, you'll get to my page. And I think underneath there, you can find some links and everything else. If it doesn't work that way, we'll get you information. We'll make sure that your, your listeners get some preview um, discount as well. So that's great. Awesome. Thank you so much. Is there anything else you wanted to share? Or? Um, I think those are big things. I, as far as contact information, or you can put it down underneath later, um, my website is www.wellnessbridge.com. That's my general catch-all for the links to everything else I'm doing. Um, I am on social media, often aren't at times, but under Facebook, it's under Lori Nemitz, L-A-U-R-I, and then Nemitz, N-E-M-E-T-Z. Um, Instagram is wellnessbridge. I am on Twitter occasionally. I think I'm under Anatomy Bridge, um, but less there. Uh, and other ways you can find me too. You can, if anybody wants to link with you, you, you can send them my email and stuff like that too. So um, it's also available via my website. Will bounce things to me. So if you don't hear from me, try again because I'm I'm very responsive um, to people and questions. So I, I welcome that in. So, yeah. Well, Laurie, thanks again for your time today for relaying uh, and participating in this historical event and Thank letting you. us know, you know, where things are going in, in anatomy and kinesiology and so many things. Um, so I we wish you the best with your future endeavors and I can't, we can't wait for your book to come out. And uh, yeah, we'll look forward to the next conversation. All right. Sounds so good. It's always a pleasure to talk to you and hear the latest too and um, get to play a little bit in our conversation as always. I really welcome that in. So thank you, Chris. You're welcome. Thank you.